So now we've got the motor working, it kind of seems totally counterintuitive to me. But um, yeah, I'm going to have to take the whole thing apart again because I've just been to Tool Station or Screw Fix and I've just picked this up. So I'm going to actually strip all the paint off every single component, stuff like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the original enamel paint online. And we're going to refurbish this whole thing and fit a variable frequency drive so we can run it on single phase. I've got three phase in the shop, but running it on single phase means that I can control the speed as well then. But whilst we're doing that, we're also going to have to rewire the motor to delta, not star, simply because if we keep it in a star configuration, we're going to lose power because the uh, voltage will drop when we've got it on the VFT. Therefore, we need to uh, take all the wiring off there now and totally dismantle the motor hit it with some paint stripper maybe put a cable gland in there, I don't know it seems alright coming out the side but there's no strain relief unfortunately oh this is going to be a frustrating job because I don't want to lose parts of the um, wiring into the motor itself so I'm not going to film all this because it will bore the life out of you all so we'll come back in a few moments whence we have indeed removed all the wiring. So we've got the component parts separated. I can't remove the stator though, that's going to have to remain inside. But uh, the two casings can come out. Bearing in mind that there's a wave, uh, a wave, a wave washer, whatever you call them, in there. So I'll put that to one side, don't want to lose it. And then what I'm going to do is just give this a wipe down with a bit of tissue. And I'm going to paint some of that um, paint stripper on there. And we'll be very careful on the motor. Because if we get any on the internal windings, it'll take the lacquer off of the windings and uh, ruin the whole thing so we don't want to do that we just make sure that we very cautiously paint a little bit on the outside I think I'm also gonna remove this ID plate and maybe try and make it a little bit more visible that came out nice and easy. It's not threaded either. That might be a bit more difficult though. So we'll come back when we've cleared it up a touch. So it's time to work on the top casing. I've put the bottom casing in the sink already with some fairy liquid if you like. I've also taken off the Fobco Star nameplate from the end. We'll see if we can freshen that up a little bit. Maybe at some point in the future, that's where it was. You can see the original colour behind. That's what we're going to try and match when we come to putting this back together. So these two um, nuts are captive with a circlip inside. So I'm just going to try not to lose an eye. And we'll take these two circlips out so we can get in to clean all the paint from, from this beautifully formed piece of aluminium and these beautifully engineered knurled nuts I think they're absolutely gorgeous so we're going to give these a good clean as well just in some fairy liquid in the sink So we're just going to plonk them in here. All we're going to do really is just turn the hot tap onto a trickle 
and then just lather these up with fairy liquid which is a degreaser and um, that will allow us to get the worst of the grease off there just using a, a, a firm toothbrush and then we can just let that sit with its washing up liquid on for a moment because these are the worst parts these nuts the top piece itself doesn't look all that bad but we'll give it the same treatment anyway Oh, lovely. Just give it a bit of a squirt. Yeah, so somebody's obviously tried to give this a new lease of life in the past. And they've just bunged on a bit of silver spray paint over the top of the original. In fact, it's coming off here now and you can see the original stuff underneath. The cream colour which cream and turquoise I think were synonymous with Febca, uh, Fobca from what I can see on the interwebs I must admit I've never come across the brand before until Froggy dropped this on my doorstep so very exciting to see uh, an original British product surviving it's a cliche, I know, but um, you wouldn't see any of the Far Eastern tat have a lifetime like this, would you? It normally ends up in the cup. Most of the stuff, scrap man, canal, or dumped at the side of a road. This is going to clean up wonderfully, I think. I have spent the whole day on this and it wasn't easy to disassemble at all. Uh, the most difficult part, of course, was there's a little nut in there. Let's get him out. Come on, little nut. There we go. Oh, that's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. That's off the back of the switch. So yeah, the most difficult part was getting um, what I believe is called the quill out of here. And that's held in at the top with, believe it or not, a circlip inside there, about there. Really difficult to see. Um, there's also a little grub screw just there um, but I've not managed to figure out what that does yet because I haven't got this um, whole carrier out of its housing. I don't think I'm going to take that out actually because there's no play in it so it wouldn't make much sense to introduce any. Just got to remove this rubber grommet now and any uh, stickers and we've got it all taken apart and ready for service. One thing I did notice though that when I took it apart um, the ring out of the chuck which sits in here is split. I don't think it's meant to be split so we're going to have to replace the chuck <coughs> every time. So um, I think it's a Jacob's chuck not sure what though, it might say it it might say it on the um, where's the other section, here it is it might say it on here it's a number 34, I don't know if you can make that out it says number 34 um, 0 to half inch or 1 to 13 mil and then yes indeed it does say on that side Jacobs so these sections are stuck as well I imagine that's one of the reasons why this has been thrown away maybe the chuck's not working very well the motor had obviously shorted out which I've repaired and it seems to be running pretty true though so I don't know 
Um, I couldn't remove that sticker all in one, which is unfortunate. It would have been nice to replace all the original decals on there, but that ain't going to happen now. So I'm just going to scrape this off so the paint stripper can get to work underneath. There seems to be something stamped under here as well, which would be nice to nice to get a look at once we've stripped all the paint back. Looks like a mark on the on the casting. Right, anyway, you don't need to see me do that. Let's give this a quick wash in the sink, get rid of all the grease and grime. Then we're going to put paint stripper on it, and I think I can leave it overnight. We'll find out when I come back tomorrow if it's dissolved the whole thing away and we'll have to start the project again well, there we go that's that sticker off and then there's these on and off stickers which we'll just get rid of them because they look freaking awful don't want them at all in fact what I'm going to be fitting on here is a potentiometer for a VFD should be good So I've painted up most of the parts, just this one to go. I actually forgot to press record on the camera. Hey. So we'll just paint this beauty up. And hopefully it will all just peel away this paint. Probably gonna leave it overnight to do its thing. Whether that's the right thing to do or not, I don't know. We'll see tomorrow, won't we? That's nice and liberally applied. I think that's perfect. So I'm going to wheel this into the workshop where any drips won't do any damage to my, to my floor. And uh, then I'm going to hose the floor down. As you can see the workshop is quite a mess. I'm just going to leave everything here tonight. Uh, I'm ready to go home now. Hey, it's only been on there a couple of minutes. We can already see it starting to work on the top coat of paint that this machine's had. Whether it's going to work on the enamel or not, I think remains to be seen because it's a different kettle of fish, isn't it? Of the old enamel paint. So fingers crossed, we'll just give it plenty of time, hopefully it will work on it. But that's it for this edition, tune in next time for Fogco Drill Restorations or whatever. <laughs> Cheers guys, see you on the next one.